Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, what it do, what it do, what it do. Welcome to episode 45 of the Axis of Combat podcast. I'm one of your co hosts, Ray, Ray Boogie, Ray Yo from the AEO, and my brother. Who go the boss? Who go got next? You already know. Uh, you already know the who blah before we jump into this episode. Like, comment, subscribe, follow Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Everybody enjoying the visuals right now. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, stay up to date. And for all of our audio listeners, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcast, you already know. And before we jump into um, this card, this uh, this terrible UFC Apex card, we're going to recap some of the bets from last weekend, which hurt my soul because I thought we had some decent reads on this card, and apparently we didn't. I'll start with the losers because I have a couple more, more than I have winners. <laughs> uh, Torres and Duncan fight to start fight to start round two. Mm. Yasmin Yeri get knocked out. Mm. Yair Rodriguez for the life of me. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest man of the night. He tore me apart. Mm. Brendan Moreno sub decision. Mm. Not mad at that one. That fight was 50-50 in my opinion heading into the fifth. My brother, I believe, had it 3-1 Mori Val, but I did not. I had it 2-2. Two, two. Name off round two. Mm. And round three. Mm. Fucker finished him in round one. <laughs> Bro. I mean, he... he t- I mean... Silver technically finished himself. Ah, he finished round himself. <laughs> Can't even lose right, these guys, but bro. Uh Marino decision. Mm. Fleecing of the night, in my opinion. I thought he wanted to fight cleanly. Um, ZM round two, round three. Mm. Jasmine Jerry knockout round two, round three. Mm. And then in a way decision, mm. which is boxing, by the way. We're gonna jump into that too. And uh we had uh Raul Rosas round one. Ricky Tercios knockouts round two, round three. They um passed. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> now for the winners, Jesus Aguilar. Um, who I thought lost the fight, to be frank with you. Yeah, we got some reverse. We got some reverse sweeping here. I would have pre- I would have preferred the Alta Moreno because he was a plus four forty. And I've I I mean, I was personally a little more heavier on him too, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. <laughs> Zal Huber um Prado over two and a half rounds. Great bet. And then I had Nakatani knockout. McRory in the Berlanga fight to be knocked down once. All that came out. I had a losing night. Boxing, I had a winning night. UFC losing night, but it's all good. How about you got for me, brother? Uh, a little more of the same old, same old, to be honest. Uh, we'll start off with the L's. Victor, Altamarino, money line. <laughs> Don't need to go further into that one. Uh, Christian Quinones, uh, money line. <laughs> Uh, that one was close, but Barcelos, old dog, third round. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> that was a great fight. That was a really good fight. Great fight. Uh, Torres Duncan, fight starts round two. <laughs> a fat three-unit bet on Yair. <laughs> Unit and a half on Moreno sub-decision. <laughs> uh, for the long shots, I got my uh, nine off, two and three. <laughs> Don't need to discuss that one. Just listen a little bit. You know, my brother over here. Previous commentary. Previous commentary. Oh, I also put a little stab on Eric Silva inside the distance. <laughs> he inside the distance himself. So. <laughs> uh, Altamarino decision. <laughs> Altamarino Dos Santos fight ends in sub. <laughs> like I said, I was invested in Altamarino. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Zaim take TKO round two and three. <laughs> Claudio Puelles, sub round one and two. <laughs> Jerry Gui, rounds two and three KO. <laughs> Jerry Gui, sub. <laughs> I really thought she could have got um Sam Page out of there. Yeah. The more I, I thought she, about it, but you Sa- know. Sam, Sam did a good job with her footwork, standing southpaw. Tough girl. There's man. a lot of things that were, she did correctly, and, and Jerry Gui just could not get into rhythm. And I also took a set stab at uh, Moreno, sub round three through five. <laughs> Rounds three through five, Moreno, in my opinion, did not win. So yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the only boxing one, only boxing uh, bet I got wrong here was Barlanga McCrory two knockdowns. <laughs> only needed one apparently. Yeah. So I'm gonna clean that boy. Boricua, uh, Boricua. <laughs> All right, what I got right? I got a uh, Chires Lacerda fight ends in sub. One unit on Aguilar's money line. Zell Huber Prado. Fight doesn't... Oh, no. Fight goes the distance. And one long shot hit. 
I got point three on the Rodriguez Bondar fight ends in sub. That's it for the UFC. But for boxing, I hit a parlay with the Inaway money line, parlayed with the Nakatani KO for plus one ninety five. Mm. So, uh, like my brother, decent at boxing, horseshit at the UFC, <laughs> horseshit overall. On to the next one. On to the next one. And we've got a real doozy for you guys, ladies and gentlemen, this Ooh. UFC Apex card, which is rumored to have been pitched to Saudi Arabia, and Saudi Arabia said, get that shit out of here. <laughs> um, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that was Saudi. I tell you what, guys, this card, this is going to be... I guarantee this is going to be one of our fastest breakdowns this podcast because this card is not great. There's some decent fights here, but there's a lot of showcase fights. So there's a lot of, you know, one-sided favorites, one-sided dogs. We're going to see who we think is a possible dog here. And we're going to figure out where, you know, as the week goes on and, you know, when you follow us on all social media platforms, we'll address you guys on where you should appropriately put your money for some of the value bets. Um, I don't think there's going to be a lot of bets on this card. Um, to be frank, so yeah. but we're gonna try and find some stuff for you guys. So yeah, top to bottom, this card is very chalky. Oh yeah, it's uh, overall very mid. It's being uh, headlined by uh, mid heavyweights, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't like my brother said. I don't the 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 favorites are juiced. I think eight out of the eleven fights here, all the favorites are like plus two fifty and up. So from a money line perspective, I ain't really liking too much here. Uh, my advice personally would be hold hold off on this card a bit. I mean, we're gonna find we're gonna try to find some spots later on. There's no props available to us at the moment, but uh, obviously next week is uh, two ninety nine. That's probably a very bettable card. Yeah, that's why we were so done about the Mexico card too, guys, because that card was fun. And, you know, we did, we're just on the wrong side of some bets. I think that's the, this is the first card. That was the first card that we were off, I think, on a good card. Both of us were off on a good card. Yeah, had some bad reads. Oh, man. That Yair one just threw me, sent some me to un, hell. Some unlucky bounces, the Al Alta Marino fight and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Just, you know, the Yair, or, Yair sent us to hell, though. Yeah. He sent us to hell. Yeah. Like, and... Uh, a lot, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, yeah, you know, Brian Ortega's upside with the wrestling. I will say this is the first time I've seen him directly go for his wrestling and not zombie walk into shots. Um, it, it, good on him. I, I mean, just Yair just let me down, man. <laughs> you know? Just like this card is letting us yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So, <laughs> all right, first fight in the prelims in the lightweight division. We have Loic Rajabov going one-on-one -on -one with Abdul Karim. Al Salwadi. Damn, I nailed that fucking name. <laughs> the Taji Tank, Rajabov, 17, 5, and 1. Fighting out of Tajikistan, 33 years old. Going against the Pride of Palestine, Al Salwadi, 15 and 3, 28 years old. Um, Al Salwadi making his debut. Going against a renowned Rajabov who is. Uh, most known for his PFL run. I tried, I think I bet Roger Boff against his debut fight. Uh, I think it was Esteban. Yep. Yep. Um, he does not like leg kicks. Nope. Uh, decent striker, decent grappler, decent fighter overall. Uh, Al Sawadi. I think he's a better grappler than he is striker. I think his striking is a little, uh, I think it's like mid. But his grappling is like that's that's kind of his bed and bread and butter. Uh, I see this fight going over. Um, I see Al Sawadi probably being the side here. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's all I got for this fight. What do you got? UFC jitters are real for sure. This guy's making his debut. Al Sawadi, he's got some good skills though. I, I can't lie. I mean, people sweat him up with those two knockout losses that he had, if I'm correct. And yeah, those those shots that he got hit with would knock anybody out. You know, so he kind of just got caught walking in. They were just well-timed shots. I, I like Al Sawadi here, but if this line gets a little more disrespectful on Rojabov, I, I think he's like, I mean, even it's already kind of disrespectful at plus 150. But I need. I would need maybe plus 175, and I'll play him. And I think it's already heading, it's trending in that direction. So we'll see what happens. Um, Al Sawadi's the lean, but mm, 
not with the greatest bit of you know confidence. Don't know if I'm about this fight, so we can move on to the next one. Next fight, Bantamweight, prelims, two debutantes. The first debutante, Vinicius Oliveira, Lope Dog. <sighs> 19 and 3, fighting out of Brazil, 28 years old, going one on one with the Lion King. <laughs> uh, Bernardo, I think his name is Sopaj? Sopa? I think Sopa. Right. Soup. Soup? Uh-uh. Uh, listen, I don't know. 11 and 2, fighting out of Sweden, but I think he's Albanian, if I'm not mistaken. 23 years old. I think out of all the fights on this card, this, this fight is probably, it might be fight of the night, low key. Uh, these two guys go after it. Vinicius, powerful striker, explosive striker. Don't like his accuracy and his defense a little too much. He's a little wild, and uh, he can be hit. Bernardo, this I mean, he's making a super quick turnaround here. He's coming in last minute in, in place of uh, Gamori, who was Vinicius o- Oliveira's original opponent. I like this kid. I think he's another good prospect. Watching some of his uh, footage online, very composed for his age. Picks his shots, good striker, solid grappling. This fight maybe has the potential to go in. It's not go, but it's. I feel like it's kind of similar to. It might look similar to the Hiragi's debut fight. Correct. Where I think is going to be is going to be that good. I'm going to lean Oliveira here. Only because, I mean, listen, uh, he's the one that's been preparing for a fight. Uh, he's probably the slight favorite. Agreed. Yeah, so I think uh, I think Oliveira's the side. This might be maybe my first dog shot here. Maybe. It's a pick at this point. I'm still up in the air about it. Um, but, yeah, I, that's all I got for this one. Yeah, I'm with you on it. For all your points, I'll be a lot shorter than that because I think you nailed pretty much everything. Um, I like Vinicius here just because he's um, he's been preparing for a fight. But um, like you said, not 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 uh, uh not mad at anyone taking a shot at Sopa Sopas over here, you know, <laughs> dog, little dog, little dog shot. But it's a pick him at this point too, and there's a reason for that. You know, this kid is skilled. They're both, you know, relatively even. It's it's an evenly matched fight, and unfortunately, outside these first two fights, this is going to be this is this last one that's going to be not a two to one favorite on one side. So you know, we'll see what we feel later in the week for this fight. But as of right now, I have Oliveira. But we'll we'll, we'll get back to you guys if we're going to bet this fight. I don't like bet. I don't like betting debut fighters. It, it's just a, it's a tough sell, man. These are two debuting fighters. Yeah, so. it's 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 nuts. So. Yeah, all of ours aside, we can move on. Next fight on the prelims at middleweight. We got Christian Leroy Duncan, CLD, going one-on-one with Claudio Ribeiro. CLD, 9-1, fighting out of England, 28 years old. Ribeiro, 11-4, fighting out of Brazil, 31 years old. Uh, This is a fight where I think CLD should get it done. I'm, I'm not too high on him. I was high on him before he made his UFC debut. Uh, but ever since coming to the UFC, I mean, uh, a little lackluster for me. Uh, and I think it's just just level of competition, if I'm being honest. Uh, Claudio, he's another guy who I was kind of high on until I wasn't. Yeah. I bet him against Roman Kopilov, and I kind of regret that one. Oh, he yeah. got cleaned out round two. <laughs> This this stylistically, I think this 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 fight just kind of fits Duncan's style. I agree. Uh, Ribeiro is going to try to grapple him. Maybe, maybe Christian should be able to stuff it. Christian should be able to piece him up. I don't think he cleans him out like Kapilov did, but I go Christian probably third round stoppage. Second, third round stoppage. Agreed. Um, the bet I probably like for this is probably over the one and a half only because Christian's probably going to be dictating. Riberio is dangerous though. Probably the hardest hitter he's fought. Yeah. That's all I got. Yeah. I'm with you. Um, I'm with you on this. I think CLD, I think CLD gets it done late. I, I think, um, though Riberio is the hardest hitter he's probably fought out of all the UFC competition he's had. 
he is also the most defensively irresponsible one. Um, he gets hit a lot. He gets hit cleanly. Um, even when he doesn't get knocked out, he gets hurt bad. I, I think uh, Claudio hits hard. He, he just doesn't have the best fight savvy or, or ring generalship. I think CLD is going to dictate the pace of this fight, knock him out late. Second, third round stoppage for CLD. I think this might, this might be his first highlight finish in the UFC. Next fight on the prelims at Bantamweight. Javid, the Snow Leopard Basharat going one on one with. How do you say this guy's first name? Amin? Amin. Amin. Amin? Zahabi. Amin Zahabi. Yeah. Uh, Basharat, perfect, perfect. 14 and 0. Hailing from Afghanistan, 28 years old. Going against Zahabi, who was 10 and 2. Fighting out of Canada, 36 years old. Uh, this is another matchup where the line is extremely crazy. Uh, I think Basharat is the side. If you're asking me, I think Basharat probably wins by decision because Basharat has not had a finish since his Contender Series fight. He he had a whole bunch of finishes before the Contender Series fight. But ever since he's been in the UFC, kind of been fighting technical, fighting safe. Good fighter. Good fighter. Good fighter. Not spectacular, but good fighter. Uh, Zahabi, probably the oldest prospect in the UFC. He fights like once a year. But he's a savvy fighter. He's got knockout power. A smart counter striker. Can grapple. Can grapple. My only issue here is that I just see way too many passive victory for Basharat. I think the way to beat him is to out grapple him. And I don't know. That's not really Zahabi's game. Correct. Zahabi's kind of just like a patient counter striker for most of his fights. Does he have the power to clip him? Maybe. But I... I think Basharat, even though I don't like him, I think he's kind of cocky and a little egotistical personally. But as a fighter, he's very high IQ. And, uh, yeah, I could just see him getting another decision win here. Is it possible for an inside the distance? Maybe. Depends on if he can break Zahabi. I don't don't think think so. so. I don't think so. But if you ask me gun to the head, I'd probably lean... Sub over submission. I mean, sub over submission. Sub over KO. If you wanted to play a prop, but I think Basher I probably gets it done by decision most more than likely. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, I think um, I think Zahabi at plus four fifty is a little absurd, though. I will say that. I would be curious to see what Zahabi's um by decision prop is, because I could see this fight being boring. And if it's boring and it's it's somewhat close, I could see it like some 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 fuckery. To be frank. Um, but uh, with that said, I think it's Basharat by decision all day. Zahabi, very, um, I-, I won't say he's the most durable guy, but he does fight smart. And I think that's exactly why he'll make it to the bell here. So it, it just, it's just a guy who's an extremely good prospect versus a guy who I forgot was on the roster because he's so inactive. So I got to go with the guy who I think has the better skills and is more active. So Basharat via decision. Next fight on the prelims, lightweight, Ludovic Klein, Mr. Highlight, going one-on-one with the debuting A.J. Cunningham, Tough the fight. savage. Tough fight. Uh, I got an opinion about this one. Go ahead. Klein, 24-1, and one, fighting out of the Slovak Republic, Slovakia, 29 years old, going one-on-one with Cunningham, the savage, 11-3, and three, fighting out of Arkansas, good old U.S. of a 29 years old. Uh, this is this wasn't Klein's original opponent. Klein's original opponent was Joel Alvarez, but this fight was also well. This card was also supposed to take place overseas. Joel visa issues couldn't come through, so they got Cunningham, last minute replacement. Cunningham, I think he is Bryce. Mitchell's cousin or Bryce Mitchell's brother. I think it's his cousin. Freedom. Oh man. I think this is going to be Klein by whatever he wants. If you want the honest truth. I agree. Uh, Cunningham. Listen, he, he reminds me of uh, Trevor peak, but without the power. Not, I don't know. He's got like country boy strength. I'm saying, but like, <laughs> but he's super hittable. He's a plotter. So he's he's Trevor Peak. 
He wants the bang. He's Dallas to Trevor Peak. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, him and Trevor Peak got a lot of, you know. Country boy similarities. Country boy similarities. <laughs> but Cl- listen, Ludovic is, he's nice, man. And I I know Ludovic don't got too many finishes in the UFC. This is a spot where I could see him getting a finish because Cunningham's going to stay, he's going to stand right there and just allow himself to get banged up, pieced up. <laughs> And Klein is just, I think he's hes too smooth. He, I'm actually curious on, uh, well, I mean, Klein is always going to be the shorter guy, you know, but he's actually got the inch and a half reach advantage. I think I, I could see head kick KO. Yes. But um, I think this is Klein all day. Yeah, Klein however he wants. He's hes very technical. He's fought like some, you know, some pretty good, decent competition in the UFC and um, arguably gotten robbed in some of those fights, to be frank. Um, he's he's a he's a very good fighter. Yeah, I just don't see what AJ has for him that's going to present any real problems. To be frank, um, besides maybe catching him with a lucky punch. So, Ludovic Klein, but however he wants, I, I'll go, I'll leave with my brother here and say head kick. If you could prop that up, <laughs> I mean, he opened up at minus five hundred. What's his line right now? Minus one thousand. Oh, yeah, yeah, dog shit line, man. You can't do nothing with these lines, ladies and gentlemen. It's a lot of, it's a lot of, that's always speeding through these fights. It's, it's, there's not a lot to do. We're just trying to give you what we think prop wise and what we think how the fight's going to turn out overall. Some of these fights we can, some of these fights we can't. So just, like I said, follow us on social media platforms for, you know, those updates. Next fight on the prelims, middleweight. Your boy, Eric Anders, going one on one with the Night Wolf, Jamie Pickett. Your boy. <laughs> 15 and 8 Terrible name I actually kind of like it I'm like a lot of we <laughs> Get the fuck out of here Your boy Fighting out of Birmingham Alabama 36 years old Going one on one With the Night Wolf Jamie Pickett 13 and 10 Fighting out of Wilmington North Carolina 35 years old uh, This is The pink The pink slip special Cause I think Whoever loses here Is probably gonna get cut I like Eric Anders here I think Eric Anders should win this fight. I think Eric Anders is better basically everywhere against Pickett. I think Pickett sucks. No offense. I just, I tried betting Pickett once and I regretted it. Eric Anders, I mean, it's unfortunate because I feel like his record is not indicative of the kind of fighter he is. I th- I thought he won the Barry Ute fight. Uh, the Jung Young Park fight was very close. I mean, it was split. Mooney's, I can't even fault him for that. The only problem with Eric Anders is like you never want to bet him at minus money. Never. Because he has a, a tendency to fight down to his opponent's level, yep. which is frustrating. That being said, I like Anders here. I want to look at props when they drop. He's only got like one sub, I think, on his record. I think this is a spot where I think he could probably get his second sub. Correct. I just I just don't I don't rate Pickett. I think Pickett's a decent boxer. That's about it. He says he's got a ground game. Not really. No ground game. This is Anders all day for me. What about you? Yeah, I I, I agree with you. I don't want my money touching any part of this fight, to be frank. Um horrible fighter. Horrible fighter. Stupid. I'm not gonna let you get the chance. I had to hit you with both of them because this is uh, this fight is Jamie Pickett, a guy with all the physical capabilities, just never put it together, to be frank. Um, I like Anders here, but not with the greatest degree of confidence and definitely not at minus 430 money line. That's not like, especially with a guy who would just, exactly what my brother said, fights down to his opponents. Yeah, I want no part of this fight, to be frank. I, I, I'm not, I, listen, I'll never rule never, say never, say never on some of the, you know, betting and probably parlaying maybe certain spots, like maybe an over or something. But picking a side here, I think I'm going to stay away, far away from this shit. So, Anders, not with the, the greatest degree of, the, of confidence, to be frank. So, Main card, flyweight. Matt Danger Schnell going one-on-one with Steve Astro Boy Ursag. What terrible name. <laughs> Astro Boy's not that bad. No, no, fuck that. Not, it's not that bad. I mean, listen, wait, he's bad. he's kind of old. Not old, but when yeah, he, gets he calls old, himself Astro Boy. Yeah. And he's old as hell already. Can he get sued by Travis Scott or something? Fuck him. No, I think that's weekend, bro. Astro Boy? Isn't it Astro Boy weekend? Man, I don't know. Well, old man. I don't listen to no more. <laughs> Match now. 
16 and 7, fighting out of Louisiana, 34 years old, going against Ursag, 11 and 1, fighting out of Perth, Australia, 28 years old. I'm on the Ursag side here. I do think this fight is probably closer than the line indicates. Schnell, he ain't really no pushover. I am worried of, like, obviously the, the big known quantity about him is his chin. Not durable. Uh, Ursag's got power in his hands. I think Ursag might be, might be the better wrestler. I think Schnell might have the better jits. But I think it's kind of a wash on the ground. I think Ursig might be able to control him on the ground. And I think when it comes to the stand-up, again, Ur like Schnell might be the more slick striker, but Ursig just hits harder. And like I said, I think this fight is close, but I'm going to lean Ursig here. I'm going to say Ursig maybe gets a finish here. I don't know. I'm kind of split on I'm kind of split on finish or decision. But I do think Ursig is the side here. But I do think this light sh this fight should be lying closer because I don't think Chanel's a pushover. And again, Chanel's one of those guys where you have to kill him. Just look at his uh fight against uh oh, Sumer Darji. Sumer Darji, yeah. That was that was you, one of the best fights I've ever seen. You gotta kill him. <laughs> if you don't kill him, you yeah. best rounds ever. Yeah. To be frank. But yeah, um, by the way, you were right. It's Travis Scott Astro Boy. I just checked I, it out. I knew I was it. just <laughs> curious. <laughs> I'm not that washed. Fuck them both, to be frank. <laughs> I but none motherfuckers. Number. But but um, <laughs> I agree with you. I think Matt Snell, especially in the first round, very very dangerous guy. His, his nickname is Danger for a reason. This dude comes forward, those heavy shots. He could catch him, and he can grapple. By the way, like he's not inept on the floor. With that said, I think Steve Ursag. I'm not very impressed with this guy. Um, I'm gonna let my my boy GSP carry me home on that one because I I cannot say it as well as him. I'm not impressed by your performance. Um, but I will say I think he, he can get probably his second knockout in this fight because I just think Matt Schnell's chin is a dustpan at this point. So I'll say Steve Ursag. I'll see how the knockout prop looks. And I, I, I got him by decision, though. I think he gets a zombie a decision. Next fight on the main card at Bantamweight. We got Umar Nurmagomedov going one-on-one -on -one with a debuting Begzat Almakan. Nurmagomedov Madoff, 16 and 0. Perfect. <laughs> Fighting out of Russia, 28 years old, going one on one with Alma Khan, who was 17 and 1. Fighting out of Kazakhstan, 26 years old. I'll start with the Alma Khan side. I think Alma Khan is a he's a decent striker. He's a better grappler. Uh, I think he's a very good prospect. I think he does a lot of things very good. Chin a little a little little sussy but besides that i mean i think this guy can go a long way in the ufc that being said he's fighting a better version of himself in umar <laughs> umar is just a like i mean just to put it bluntly he's a fucking monster yeah nobody wants to fight this guy he's khabib's cousin right khabib's cousin uncle yeah. uncle 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 khabib cousin umar yeah that's nuts dude umar Instead of just waiting around for a fight, waiting around for the Sanhagen fight that Sanhagen wants to run back, uh, he said, "Just yeah, whatever. I, I don't want. I want to stay active. Give me whoever you want to give me. Feed me rappers or feed me beats. You know what I'm saying? They're giving him a de a decent prospect here. I mean, this is like low reward, low gain for. I mean, it's it doesn't make sense for Umar, but I think Umar he wants to stay active at this point. Just wants to. I think he just gets it done. Yeah. This I and I I'm gonna pick sub. I get sub two. That and this is gonna be again no indi no indictment on Almakan. I think Almakan's a good fighter. I just think it sucks that he needs to debut against Nuraga Madoff. But tough, tough sledding. It's tough. But tough sledding. I'm gonna say Nuraga Madoff by sub. That that's the pick. Agreed. Featured. I think this is the featured bout. Am I right? Yeah, it is. Yes, featured featured bout. Main card, flyweight. Alex Perez, Muhammad the Punisher Makayev. Perez, 20, 24 and 7, fighting out of California, 31 years old. Makayev, perfect, 10 and 0. <laughs> fighting out of uh, England, 23 years old. Uh, well, first things first, this fight, maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. Depends if Alex Perez decides to show up. <laughs> but if he does. Uh, I think the line 
It's wild. It, yeah. it, it could be a little wild. I, I, I kind of get it. Again, he hasn't fought in a long time. Pulls out of every every single fight. Um, Makayev, hot prospect, young. Active. Active. Tough to he's one of those tough to kill kind of cats. And I'm saying like they he's been putting some crazy submissions where he just he would rather break his leg Thank than submit. Wait. He's hard to kill like Steven Seagal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think Perez, I think if this fight stays standing, I think Perez is actually kind of alive because I think he's just the better striker. Makayev, not really he's super low volume. That's the I think that's the one era or uh problem in Makayev's game overall. Agreed. He just doesn't throw enough strikes. Even on the ground, doesn't throw enough strikes. Nah. But, I mean, for, you know, even in his last fight, I mean, arguably losing, but gets the third round miracle like he's been doing. Yep. And he's had two fights like that, by the way. Yeah. And he is against, he's going against a guy here who who's lost, I think, almost all his fights, if not all his fights by submission. He's lost, I know he's got like five submissions. That's else. nuts, bro. I mean, granted, if you look at who he's lost via submission to, most of them are hammers in this division. But um, with that said, I would say probably Makai by, this, by, by sub. Um, I, that's how I'm leaning this fight. But if this fight stays standing, Alec Perez has some decent striking, man. Really good striking. He goes to the legs really well. His Heavy leg, leg kicks, yeah. Leg kicks are nasty. He's, I think he's one of maybe two fighters or maybe the only fighter with two leg kick stoppages in the UFC. So yeah, he, he beat up Formiga. He, I mean, older Formiga, or, or Formiga. but he cooked him. He beats up guys' legs bad, man. So if Makaev can't get this fight to the floor, we'll see what Alex Perez's uh, takedown defense looks like in this fight. But if he, if Makaev has any uh, bit of a hard time getting him to the floor, um, Alex Perez can get him into some deep waters and, and drown him with the leg kicks. And then that will, you know, not permit the shots to be so powerful either from Makaev both on the feet and as well as him shooting to, for takedowns. Um, but with that said, I like Makayev by submission here. I think he gets it done. He's finished every, every, uh, pretty much o- almost everyone he's fought. And um, he's been figuring it out. I think he's getting better. He's young. Yeah, actually, yeah, he's, he's finished seven of his ten. So uh, six, of them by, six of them via submission. I just think that he's getting better. And he's also, you're going to make gradual, pretty gradual jumps between training camps at 23 years of age. I also think that Tim Elliott fight, Loki, I think both of them had a bet on that, that fight to end in a third <laughs> round via submission from Makayev. So. Makayev definitely did because I, he, that third round, he turned up. He turned up. Yeah. He lost the first two rounds. So, but I, I, it, it almost feel, felt fixed. That's all I'm going to say. But, you know, I allegedly. Like, allegedly. Allegedly. So, but I, I like Makayev here. Co main event, light heavyweight, Vitor. I don't know how to say his name. How do you say that nickname? I don't know. Like, ow, Petrino going one on one with Tyson Pedro. Petrino, 10 and 0. Perfect. <sighs> fighting out of Brazil, 26 years old, going one on one with Tyson Pedro, 10 and 4. Fighting out of Australia, 32 years old. I, I get why Petrino's the side here. I get why he's the favorite. I mean, fucking freak, athletic. Good chin. He shouldn't have cardio for the amount of muscle he has, but, but he, he does. does. Yep. Solid chin, power. Um, I think his grappling is a little overrated. Yes. Pedro, man, he's, I know he's got a bit of a bad rap, but I think this line should probably be a little closer. I get it. He doesn't have a win outside the first round. I don't, I don't hold that against him too hard. I know he, they, as ever since they brought him back from his ACL, he's been just getting softballs. But I think Pedro, in my opinion, is the better technical striker here, and I think he's the he's got the better jujitsu. I think where Petrino probably got him is probably the wrestling and the power and just Raw pure power. power and athleticism and cardio. Correct. Even though I think the I mean, uh, my brother might disagree, but I think the the Pedro cardio thing might be a little bit of a myth, a little bit. But um, I'll give the I'll give the cardio to Petrino. I think Petrino's the side here. I think Petrino. Pro- if this goes past round one, he's live to finish. I like the KO, but I'm 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 literally debating if I want to play Pedro as a dog. I think if Pedro does win, I think his path to victory is probably sub 
only because I just think he's just he. I I don't know. For me, I I just think it's night and day. I think his his jujitsu is just way better than Petrino. Petrino, I, I think I they didn't they just give him his blue belt. Yeah, or when he yep. submitted um or his purple belt. Yeah, his purple belt. This Pedro's a black belt, and he's he's been in there. You you can see the technique now. Yeah, you want you want to hold the uh, the over Saint Pru loss against him. Whatever. OSP is known for doing some weird shit on the ground. I don't even hold that against them, but correct. I think Petrino's the side. I might get to a Pedro bet. I'm I'm not mad at the Pedro side um at all. Um via dog shot. Um am I leaning it? I don't I'm not gonna lean that. I think Petrino is gonna knock him out at some point because not only is it a cardio issue, which may be a little overblown according to my brother, but it's also a chin issue, man. I, I don't think his durability is there. Um, this guy, he, I think he is, I think he does have the better skills on the feet and on the floor. I'm going to be honest with you. I just think Petrino has fought maybe one or two people that are, have better skills and better, you know, on the feet and the, and, uh, and the feet on the floor, but he just gets to them, you know, and he can win striking battles with strikers and he can win grappling battles with grapplers. Um, but that's just because of his physical gifts. So I like Petrino. He has the lean, but if I took a shot on Pedro just because of the skills, I'm not, I'll let. We'll, we'll, I'm not going to be surprised if I wind up doing that by the week's end. So, yeah, give me Petrino. Possibly a bet on Pedro. Main event, heavyweight, big old meaty man bumping meat. Jarzinho Rosenstruck, biggie boy, going one on one with Shamil Gaziev. Rosenstruck. 13 and 5. I don't know why I got stuck there. Fighting out of Suriname. Suriname? It's Suriname. 35 years old, going one on one with Shamil Gaziev. 12 and 0. Oh, another perfect. There's a lot of uh, street, like undefeated guys on this card, huh? That's, that's what I'm saying. It's like a showcase card. That's why like, we're steaming through it, ladies and gentlemen. Like, yeah. it, it, it's a lot of just chalky favorites, man. Fighting out of Bahrain. 34 years old. Uh, I get why Shamil is the favorite. He's definitely got the grappling upside. Uh, this line, I think, is kind of perfect. Perfectly <laughs> lined, I think. Uh, it's a little scary because you would think that if Shamil had the grappling edge, he would be like minus 200. And this would be just an easy bet here. But listen, Rosenstruck, puncher's chance, good counter puncher. Correct. Off his back foot as well. Power carries all five rounds. And Gazeev doesn't really go to his wrestling often. Like he does, he does, but he doesn't. It's weird. He's a weird one. The way I see this is like Gazeev, like I think he's got a good two rounds in him. I don't know if he can go five rounds. I give the cardio edge to, to Biggie Boy. Agreed. I just think that if Gazeev can't get him out in the first two rounds, I think he's cooked. Yeah. Because I don't think he's uh technically, I, I mean, obviously Rosenstruck's the better striker. Gazeev, I mean, he'll throw volume out there. But he's a little sloppy. I mean, he he got some, he got some head movement. You know what I'm saying? He he could weave a little bit, a Gazeev. little bit. Yeah, Gazeev. Yeah, his strike, his 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 defensive striking's bad, but his offensive striking's actually not bad. Yes, he throws punches down the pipe. Like he's actually pretty pretty straight puncher. You know, so it's good to see that at heavyweight. If he can get Rosenstruck down, he's got two rounds to do it. But if this goes past two, even if this goes past one, I can see like halfway in the second round. Gazeev taking some deep breaths. Rosenstruck could light him up. Bad. I don't think this fight goes the distance. That's. I think that's the play, to be frank. I think Rosenstruck, if you like him, KO. Yes. I mean, he's already nice. at. You know, he's got decent plus money, but I think is a Rosenstruck KO. And then Gazeev ITD, for yeah. sure, inside the distance. So Gazeev sub is probably the way he wants to go there. But I think, yeah, it's Gazeev inside the distance. Rosenstruck KO. Yeah. This this ain't seen the scorecards in my opinion. If this sees the scorecards, something fucked up. Someone fucked up. Somebody fucked Both up. Both of them fucked up. Who fucked wins up. the who wins the decision though? Probably Rosenstruck. Yeah. Oh, I mean it, it depends, man, because if Gazeev paces himself and just I would say Rosenstruck though. I, I I it could go so many different ways. That's why this fight's a little scary and when that happens, I usually don't pick both either side because it's it's a it's a well matched fight. Could to be, be frank, could be a decent live live bet opportunity. Yes, maybe, yes, know? yes. It's good. He's smashing him, doesn't get him out of there. You play Rosenstroke after three. I agree. 
second, third, even if he's huffing and puffing, he might have the crazy jitters from just having his first pay per view event at the in the UFC, even though if it's at the apex. So you yeah, know, I agree. I think uh, Rosenstruck, semi live dog. I'm I am gonna pick Gazeev as the official pick, but I might not. I don't know how I'm gonna bet it, but you know. Yeah, I w- Yeah, if if this line gets disrespectful towards Rosenstrike, I play it just because he has legit knockout power. So, and that's all we got for UFC Vegas eighty seven in the Apex Center, but we do got one notable uh, boxing card to talk about. I throw it to my brother for the introduction. Yeah, we have uh, Amanda Serrano fighting Nina Minky, and um, Jake Paul fighting who the fuck cares. As the co-headliner, to, to be right? frank, yeah. <laughs> um, the only reason I bring these fights up is because there is, uh, I got to look at the lines, to be frank, but there is money to be made in this card. This is a showcase fight for Amanda Serrano in Puerto Rico in the Coliseum. I, I, I wish I was there, to be frank, because it's one of the more history-making events in the Coliseum in Puerto Rico. I, I like Amanda. I love Amanda, and I'm going to roll Amanda probably by decision in this fight. But I want to do a little more tape study on this Nina, uh, this young lady Nina, before I yeah. commit commit to it. I, I think she's a tough girl, but I don't know if Amanda could pack her up or not pack her up. I also want to see if Nina's. I want to get a little bit more of a read before I rule Nina out as a possible dog. Um, Jake Paul is gonna rinse the guy he's fighting. Yeah, if he if he's it's, anything like his last opponent, where they're trying to set him up. I mean, listen, they're matchmaking Jake Paul perfectly. Correctly. It's you know perfect. What I'm for, for people who, uh, for, I know the MMA heads, they, they hate this shit, but in boxing, they do it correctly. Yes. This is perfect this, matchmaking this for how, Jake. This is how you bring a guy up, and I'm Correct. saying. Correct. Get him experience, you know, build his record, you know, so. Yeah, if it's anything like his last opponent, I think it's probably a KO. But again, I don't know his last opponent. Got to look into it. I don't, even know the guy, I don't even know the guy's fucking name, so. Yeah. All I know is Jake Paul's on the co-headline here. He's probably going to win. Don't know how. But I like also Amanda. Don't know how. And the only reason I even say if she's a live dog is because Amanda is slowing down. Um, and that's the only reason. If Amanda in her prime mops all these girls, especially with three 12-minute rounds. She has more time to work and more time to get them out of there. But she's getting a little older now. Um, she is slowing down. It's unfortunate that it took this long for her to get the shine that she's been getting. But, yeah, I like Amanda. I'm, I'm going to say by decision, but hold, hold the phone on that one. I will say that, but it's 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 a great it's a great showcase for Puerto Rico, and um, I'm I'm honored. I'm honored. We're both honored here. So, but uh, to, to wrap up, to wrap this up, this is episode 45 of the Access to Combat podcast. You already know the business. Like, follow, subscribe, comment, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Everybody who enjoyed the visuals on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell to stay up to date. And for all of our audio listeners, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcast, you already know. And uh, I want to apologize on the back side of this podcast for my voice. If I sound a little scrubbish in this, now I'm a little under the weather. My voice is not allowing me to laugh the same way. It's not allowing me really to talk the same way. But um, yeah, I um, we appreciate you guys listening anyway and for tuning in. And um, you guys already know the business. It's free content, free 99 all across the board, man. So Hook us up. We show us some love, man. And uh, we're definitely going to start keep improving on this content and getting you guys the best bank for your bucks on some of these picks. So we love y'all. We'll holla at y'all. Peace.